So the title of the exhibition is Accident and Process, because I guess it sort of quite specifically speaks to two strands of his practice, one which is the idea of uh, experimentation and instruction, but also the chance that can come as part of those. So kind of setting out structures, determining processes, putting information, materials, sort of mediums through the paces of those kind of structures or confines, and yet having a really quite amazing ability to let chance also play a role. So sort of setting things up and then allowing things to happen is probably the easiest way to describe how Derek works. And I think accident and process kind of captures both sides of that coin. Not many artists are actually, I think, as comfortable working with risk as Derek is, nor are they kind of as perhaps driven by it, very curious about the sort of unknown, unforeseen, unexpected. I mean, particularly in terms of Australian contemporary practice, he's someone that has always worked on that front foot. And I think that means it's been more difficult to perhaps follow his practice because he works across types and across disciplines. You know, it's the kind of ideas that are always driving things rather than a specific look. When we see something that's overly mechanised and completely structured and perfect, we, we can't recognise it as really. I mean, it, it's those little spaces that oxygenate the thing and give it life. And that's all, you know, if, if I do something really organised and really perfect, it's going to, for me, it appears kind of stolid. So I need to just break it a bit to let life in, yeah. I studied in Sydney and once I graduated from school, I um, decided I'd become a, a teacher. So I went to a teacher's college in Goulburn and um, broke away from there after two and a half years. 27, I went to art school. Just bang, that was it. That was the decision. Yeah, so prior to that I had sort of, I thought I could change the world through being a teacher. And then I thought I could change the world through being an artist. Neither of which is at all possible. But, you know, you have those passions um, at that time. So, you know, it was, a, it was an interesting sort of development for me and I just decided I'd be doing that. So I went very seriously to art school and uh, I went to Adelaide to the School of Art there. After maybe six months of painting, I just went, no, nope, and decided I'd just be looking at sculpture and objects and ideas. And I've done that ever since. I would describe Derek's practice as quite an ambitious one, both conceptually and in terms of its scale. You know, in terms of visual practice, he's really interested in the craft of photography, image making, screen printing, drawing, you know, like the whole kind of slew of things that you would engage with at art school. There's a play. I mean, there's, I, I find a real enjoyment in terms of how he works with materials, basically, and I find that quite palpable in terms of the experience of the work itself. I can see that this is someone who likes colour, who knows how to work with saturation and contrast and scale, from the very fine detail to the type of printing, to the framing, to the way work's placed in relationship to each other. So there's a kind of craftsmanship that I think is quite central to how he works. But then he's also pursuing these processes, like I mentioned before, with accident and process and chance and, and structure and instruction and kind of all these filters, I suppose, to be pushing ideas through. And then in the bigger picture, he's dealing with really, really big issues that are central to Australia's history. So whether they be colonial relationships, whether they be sort of indigenous settler relationships, whether they be the impact of all of those things on the environment, you know, sort of looking at the perpetuation of nationhood, is looking at the perpetuation of what happens when we use and abuse the landscape or ideas of the landscape. So it's highly conceptual in its rigour, and I think also its resonance for Australians, but it's also really motivated by a genuine sort of studio practice of investigating and experimenting. The term unsettling is such a fantastic term. I think it elicits an automatic response from people. I think the term unsettling in Derek's practice, it's sort of mostly used in terms of a series called White Goods which is a series of nine or ten very large-scale uh, photographic images. I uh, wanted to kind of have a mixed view of people in the landscape, meaning that I wanted it to represent different periods. I think it 
it does that quite well. Some of the clothing is from the 1950s and some more contemporary. The whole point to me was to bring to the photograph a sort of naivety and glib kind of way of looking at the world, you know, like just what, like, it's all good, you know, we're here, we're happy, you know, it's all great. But there's this ghosting thing underneath, you know, and I'm, I'm two, two main things for me. One is our Indigenous heritage, you know, which is kind of one of shame, really. And, and then the other thing was climate. We've got this kind of really kind of interesting collision starting to occur where we've forgotten how we got here effect effectively in real terms in real terms and we're forgetting what we rely upon to be here yeah and they're kind of coming to us to a head you know it's, it's interesting there's some play on the term white goods there's some play on the kind of hanging of these kind of modern consumer items you kind of feel like you're actually looking at bodies hanging in trees and hanging off bridges. So it plays really quite directly with race relations. So I think his imagery is unsettling as much as it is sort of disarming. He kind of takes things which are icons, visual images, which are kind of privileged as part of a white Australian history and the representations of those histories, whether they be in the visual arts, whether they be in literature and plays with them, kind of pulls them apart, so they don't sort of end up quite as privileged as they once, once were. And I think, you know, Australia is generally quite uncomfortable with its colonial relationship to the first people of this country. And, you know, that's certainly been, has been an ongoing consideration for Derek since the early 70s. I don't want to be too rigid about this. I know a lot of people have very defined ways of working. I've deliberately, and I think that's because of my experience with in the environment, is to kind of somehow tap into that as well, which in terms of a process is not quite possible because we function almost arithmetically compared to nature, you know. But we can see in it that there's sort of mistakes and accidents that we might call those things, but it's natural, of course. They, get, they interfere with us, you know. And I'm interested in that interference, in the interruptions and how process comes from accidents and how, you know, we try to, if we have an accident, we try to make good of it, you know, we try to develop it and perfect. And I think it's a bit like failure. An accident is like failure, you know, you, you, only, you, have to have, you have to fail to succeed. You have to sort of learn not to go there again or to kind of, you know, whatever energy it gives you, it's a good energy because, hopefully, because you, you strive to, be, to not do it again. Mm. Derek and I have been working on this show, I think, for about 24 months, two years. Given it's five decades, there's been a lot of work to look at. Given the range of work that Derek makes, also just sort of thinking very closely about how to make an exhibition that communicates the breadth of that practice without being overwhelming. And I think what we've put together for accident and process pretty much covers the various formats in which he works gives a very good kind of sense or overview of those five decades of practice, while still including the really iconic works that most people know him for. So there's kind of immediate kind of hooks that people will be drawn to come and see the exhibition for, but then a whole, you know, kind of range of other works that they'll be introduced to in, in addition or association to those. Well, I'm motivated by lots of things, and many of those things still exist. Some I'm yet to find, and others I live with. I mean, there's mortality, you know, it's just this overriding thing of mortality. We have many ways of dealing with that. And we kind of try and create life. I mean, it's life and death, they drive everything. We kind of fabricate and, you know, colour it and texture it, you know. But an idea that is real to the moment is a great thing. It doesn't have to last as long as people around you and you understand it to be something, an entity that's not occurred before.